Let's say we're asked to find the domain and range of these graphs of functions below. So here, again, we're looking at the graph from left to right for which values of x have corresponding y values. We see that the function starts at negative 3, but there is no corresponding y value here. So negative 3 will not be in our domain. However, all these y values correspond to these x values to the right of negative 3, but we have a stop at 0. At 0, the function doesn't have a corresponding y value. So we can start building our domain. Our first interval or our first piece is going to be from negative 3 to 0, excluding both those numbers, because neither at x equals negative 3 nor at x equals 0, the function has a y value. Now again, we pick up at 0, and we see that we have no issues until we get to 3. So our next piece will be from 0 to 3. And we see that at x equals 3, there's no solid dot here or here. So 3 will not be in our domain. We continue again past 3, 3, and then the next problem is at 5. The function stops here. There is no y value for x equals 5. So our last piece of the domain is the interval from 3 to 5. No brackets anywhere because there's no solid dots at any endpoints. For the range, we're looking at the lowest y value to the highest y value that the function actually passes through. So here you'll see that the function does not pass through the y value 1 because there's an open circle here. And on this side, the function doesn't hit 1 either. So we start at 1 and then we go up. And we're looking for, are there y values corresponding to 2 and all the numbers between 1 and 2? Now, between 1 and 2, there's no y values here. However, I have y values here. So I keep going past 2. But at 2, you might say, oh, there's an open circle here, so maybe I have to stop my range and exclude 2. We actually don't have to do that, because if we look to the other side, the y value of 2 is hit somewhere. It doesn't have to be satisfied everywhere, but at some x-coordinate, there has to be a y value of 2, and that happens to be at 2 itself. Then we keep moving up. All these y values here, in fact, have two, I'm sorry, all these y values here have two corresponding x values, one on the left and one on the right. So no problem, no problem, no problem. All of these y values do have corresponding x values. We move up to the y value 5. Now there's an open circle here means that there is no point at 0, 5. So we don't have a y value of 5 here. If I go to the left, there is no function there. If I go to the right, I actually have an open circle here as well. So my range is going to start at 1 with an open parenthesis because, oops, uh, this function is not defined there. And it's going to stop at 5 because the function doesn't have an x value that gives a y value of 5. So that's going to be my first piece, 1 comma 5. Now starting with 5, excluded, I go up to 7, but I'm not including 7 either. I don't have a y value of 7 anywhere on this graph. So I'm going to take the union of that interval with 5 comma 7, and that happens to be my range. Let's look at this example. Let's look at this example. Here we start analyzing the graph and we see that we have arrowheads. That means that the graph continues on to negative infinity on this side. It goes up to positive infinity here, goes down to negative infinity, goes up to positive infinity, up to infinity, and goes to positive infinity on the x-axis. So when we start looking for values of x where the function is not defined, 
we have no issues all the way until we get to negative two. At negative two, there is no y value that we can assign to it. So my first piece for the domain is going to be from negative infinity to negative two, but I'm going to have to exclude the negative two since I don't have a y value there. Then I'm going to start and pick up again at negative two itself. I have y values all the way until I get to x equals three. So I have no issues from negative two to three, but I don't have a y value at three itself. So my next piece is going to be union negative two comma three. And finally, I have to, once I get over this asymptote at three, I don't run into any issues either. So continuous all the way through. So my last piece will be from three to infinity. Now with regards to the range, we're looking for the lowest y value to the highest y value. And in fact, if I just look at this middle piece, I know that this goes down to negative infinity, and this goes up to positive infinity, and it hits all the numbers in the middle. All these y values are hit. All these y values are hit as well. So the range is simply negative infinity to positive infinity. For domain, we have to look at each of the pieces from left to right. For the range, we can look at one piece. If this one piece gives us from negative infinity to infinity, I don't have to worry about this flank on the left or this flank on the right because the y values have to get hit somewhere. They don't have to get hit everywhere. Similar question. Instead of it going wavy up and down, I modified it so that it's this upside down parabola looking thing. So for the domain, we again start analyzing it from left to right. Here we see arrowhead, 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 and arrowhead, and another one here. So that means these graphs continue on in those directions forever. So from negative infinity to negative two, I don't have any issues. This is a nice even function. So that means that my first interval in the domain will be from negative infinity to negative two. At negative two itself, I don't have a y value. So I'm going to jump over it, start again at negative two, all these are fine. So I'm going to have x values from negative two to positive two in the domain, and that I'm going to indicate by negative two to positive two. And then I jump over it at two again, and all these y values exist for these x values. So all of these x values are in the domain of this function. So from two all the way to infinity, indicated by two comma infinity. For the range, we need to be a little more careful than the previous example here. This function has it going down to negative infinity on both sides. So I know I'm gonna to get to negative infinity and I'm going to hit all these y values on my way up, but I'm going to have to stop at one. So my first piece for the range will be from negative infinity to positive one. And because the line actually, or the curve does go through one, the one is going to be included indicated by square brackets. Now you'll notice that there are no y values between one and three that get hit. So if the y value is two, if I move to the left or I move to the right, I don't find any x values for which the y value is two. And that doesn't happen until I actually get north of y equals three itself. So my range picks up again at three, but I don't include it because there's a horizontal asymptote here. I start climbing up above three and all of these y values get hit up until positive infinity. So my second piece is going to be union three to infinity. Now I'm gonna show you these two graphs back to back. I made a very subtle change. Here, I put an open circle there and an open circle here. Here, I don't have those. Same exact graph, just modifying it ever so slightly. And let's see what happens to our answers. The domain from this region to this region will still be the same, negative infinity to negative two. I don't have any holes here. So that still stays the same. However, instead of from negative two to two, I actually have an open circle at x equals zero. So my domain values will include from negative two to zero, and I'm gonna have to take a break here. 
but then I can continue on from zero all the way to two. I have all these corresponding Y values for these X values. So the next piece will be from zero to two. And then to the right of two, I see that I don't have any issues until I actually get to four. At four, there's an open circle. So that means the next interval that I write is from two to four. All these X values have these corresponding Y values. I skip over the four, and then everything to the right of four is good deal. So my last piece to the domain will be from four to infinity. For the range, again, we gotta be a little clever here. We start at negative infinity because these arrowheads indicate that they're going down in both directions. So we start at negative infinity and we come up to one. Now in the previous example, we put square brackets around the one because the graph did pass through that number. But y equals one is not filled in here. We don't have any points on this graph where the y value is one. If we look all the way to the left and all the way to the right, we have no y values for this point. So one is going to be excluded from the range indicated by this parentheses here. Then again, we see that there's a gap in the y values. Nothing happens until three. North of three, we're okay, but there's this open circle here. However, let's say that this is at four. There is a y value of four on the other side of the graph. So this portion actually tells us everything north of three is good. So we end our range with three to infinity. Now the next question is very, very similar to this. So play close, pay close attention to this. All I did was I added an extra hole here at four. So there's a hole on this side and there's a hole on this side. Now you might think, well, if you make a hole there, then it's just gonna affect the range because now four has to get thrown out of the range as well. But you gotta be careful with the domain also. If we start looking at this, no longer do we have a nice continuous path from negative infinity to negative two. There's actually a break at negative four now. So our domain will start from negative infinity, stop at negative four, because we have to throw that number away. And then everything from between negative four to negative two is okay. So we include those numbers in the domain, negative four to negative two. Now from negative two to zero, we already discussed. From zero to two, we already talked about in the previous example. Now here, uh, actually the rest of it is the same as the previous example. Two to four we'll have in the domain because of this region. Four has to get skipped because there's an open circle there and everything to the right of four is okay. So we get that to be our domain. The range on the other hand has to be tweaked slightly as well. We still start at negative infinity and climb up to one, but we have to exclude one. So we have negative infinity to one with one being excluded. Then as we climb up, everything to the north of three is not okay anymore. The y value four is never hit either on the left hand side or on the right hand side. So we actually have all the y values from three to four being hit by these numbers, but the number four itself is not. So we stop the interval from three to four. Now past four, no problem. All these y values hit all the numbers from four to infinity. So our last piece is, well, from four to infinity itself.